Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 11 pro and the iPhone 11 have been out for a little while. And if you're trying to decide which one to get, I'm hoping this will help you decide which one is best for you. Now, the first thing is the colors. The iPhone 11 pro comes in this new midnight green color. It also comes in space gray, which I have here in the pro max, which they're identical in every way, except their size. And you also have a silver and a gold as well on top of those two colors with the iPhone 11, you have an all new green color that I have here. You also have a new purple along with white, black, yellow, and product red. So those are all the colors that are available for these devices. Now the actual price of them is a little bit different. In fact, the iPhone 11 pro comes in at $300 above what we have with the iPhone 11. So the prices start at 999 and go all the way to 1,349. At those prices, you've got the option for 64, 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage. It is not expandable storage in either of the devices on the iPhone 11. This one comes in at 699, which is $50 cheaper than last year's iPhone 10 R model and goes all the way to $849. It comes in 64, 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage. The sweet spot is 128 gigabytes for the iPhone 11, since it's only $50 more. So I would go for that. If you need a little bit more storage, it's $749. Now the actual construction of both of these devices is a little bit different. The iPhone 11 pro is made out of stainless steel. So it's got a stainless steel band all the way around. It's both glass back and front, and it's supposed to be stronger glass this year on both devices, but the pro and the pro max also have a matte finish on the back. Whereas the camera bump is actually a glossy finish. Apple has changed this on the iPhone 11 models and swapped that around. So you'll see the, the back is glossy on the iPhone 11, where the camera bump is actually a little bit of a matte texture to it. So it's all one piece of glass. Now the construction of the iPhone 11 is aluminum and you have this aluminum ring around the outside edge, similar to the iPhone 10 R of last year, but that's the main difference as far as build. When it comes to the actual weight of them, the weight is very similar. The iPhone 11 pro is 6.63 ounces or 188 grams. The iPhone 11 is 6.84 ounces or 194 grams. So they're very close in weight and you do have that size difference though, because this is aluminum, it will be a little bit lighter than the pro max model. If you're going for that. Now, the big factor that's different between both of these is the display on the iPhone 11 pro. You have an OLED display, which has more vibrant colors along with a higher pixel density. So you have 2,436 by 1,125 with 458 pixels per inch. This year, Apple calls it a super retina XDR display. It allows for HDR video. If you're using the Apple TV app, but you can still only watch. 1080p on YouTube. And that's due to a dispute with Apple and Google and not supporting different versions of codecs that allow you to watch those videos. As far as the iPhone 11 goes, this is a lower resolution display, but it's a liquid retina display. It's probably the best retina LCD on the market at this point. It's 1792 by 828 pixels with a density of 326 pixels per inch. You still cannot see the pixels and the display does support HDR 10 and you can watch 1080p videos on YouTube. So if we go to one of my videos, you can see the resolutions available are 1080p on both of these displays. It scales to 1080p when you're watching a YouTube video, you can't see the pixels when you look at them side by side, they look great overall. And I think most people that are not really into specs and things like that will notice no difference whatsoever. Other than the vibrance of an OLED display, you will have brighter colors and deeper blacks because on an OLED display where there is the color black, it actually turns off those pixels. It also goes a lot brighter on the pro you have 800 nits when it's turned all the way up and it can peak up to 1200 nits on the iPhone 11. It's hard to show you on this camera, but the iPhone 11 goes to about 600 nits as far as its maximum brightness right around those areas. So they're fairly bright. They're both viewable in sunlight, but they are a little bit different. Now this year, all devices that are new have haptic touch 3d touch is gone. So that means it's replaced with a long press. You still get all of the same features you would before for the most part. 
but it's more of a long press. It's not as intuitive and you actually don't feel like you're pushing into the screen to activate those shortcuts. So if you push on it, it's not exactly the same, but it's the same between all of the new devices. So you're not compromising when switching from device to device. The speakers on both of them are equally loud. They both support Dolby Atmos. They both have a nice stereo wide stereo sound. You have a top speaker up here at the top where you listen to your phone calls, but it's also projecting sound towards you. And then at the bottom, you also have speakers, but they're a little bit different as far as the size or as, or at least the way they look. Now, as you can see together due to the antenna lines, it's a little bit asymmetric on the iPhone 11 pro. This isn't really an issue. The sound is all the same and these are the microphone and speaker array. So overall it's very good. Now the batteries are also differentiating factors when it comes to both of these. The iPhone 11 pro has a 3000, 1046 milliamp hour battery. Whereas the iPhone 11 has a slightly larger 3,110 milliamp hour battery. However, the iPhone 11 pro tends to get about one to two hours more in battery life overall with screen on time. That's due to the efficiency of the OLED display, new efficiencies that Apple has made this year, as well as the new a 13 bionic chipset. So you will get good battery life in both, but the 11 pro may get you an additional hour or two. And speaking of that, chipset, the a 13 bionic is in both of these devices. You have the same chipset. You have the same amount of Ram. Everything is the same as far as performance between both of them. So if you're opening an application, maybe you're opening settings, you'll notice that they open at the exact same rate. And if you're doing any tasks that are more intense, you're really not going to see a difference when it comes to any of those. It's equally fast on both devices. There's zero compromise picking one over the other when it comes to speed, performance and all day usage. There's also no compromise when it comes to face ID. They're equally fast. They unlock at the same rate because they're the same version of face ID. They work really well. And that also leads me to the cameras, which are the exact same cameras on the front this year. So if I go into the cameras, flip the screen around. They are both 12 megapixel sensors. They're true depth cameras. You can do emoji and emoji, Memoji, whatever you'd like. You can do that with the forward facing cameras, and then you can record 4k 60 P video. So if you want to record video, I actually recorded the iPhone 11 pro video that I did as far as the review completely with the camera on the 11 pro. So it's really good. Anytime I'm on the screen, the actual forward facing camera is what you're seeing as far as the rear cameras. They're identical in every way with the exception of the iPhone 11 is missing the telephoto lens. So they're all 12 megapixel sensors, but the iPhone 11 is lacking a telephoto lens, but it still can zoom digitally. And if I show you this photo here, you'll see one is using the optical lens. One is using digital zoom, and it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. Apple does a really good job at two times zoom to give you the best result possible. So I wouldn't say you're missing a whole lot unless you need to zoom past two X, you really don't need anything as far as the telephoto lens. Instead, you've got a wide and ultra wide, which I think is much more useful for most people. And they're incredible cameras. They both record in 4k 60 P if you'd like to do that high frame rates for slow motion. They both have portrait mode this year too, and they both can do portraits of animals or objects. So if we go into portrait mode last year, because we only had one lens on the iPhone 10 R, we could only take portraits of people. Instead, now we can take portraits of flowers or anything else we would like as well. Now, one of the other big factors between both of these is the OLED display actually has PWM or flicker that you can't see with your eye, but can affect some people and give them headaches or make them feel nauseated. And you can see that here in slow motion where the iPhone 11 pro is actually flickering all the time in slow motion. You just can't see it, but otherwise it's flickering and that helps it control brightness. And that really affects some people's eyes gives them headaches, like I said. So the iPhone 11 does not have that because it's an LCD. So that's something to consider. Although the flicker rate is better this year than it was in previous years. I don't seem to get headaches like I used to. So it is better overall, but it's still something to con consider. Now the overall size of both phones is very similar. However, the iPhone 11 pro is slightly larger due to that larger display and does feel a little bit 
more bulky. So if you're coming from an iPhone SE, for example, the iPhone 11 pro is a very good compromise of a larger display and a more comfortable size. However, if you want a giant phone, you'll want to step up to the iPhone 11 pro max, where it is much bigger and much more noticeable in the hand when you're holding it. So just keep that in mind. The size is not a big deal for most people, especially if you like the larger phone, but if you want a smaller phone, the 11 pro is the way to go. Now, the good thing is this year, both devices have IP 68 certification. The iPhone 11 pro actually has a little bit better IP 68. And what that means is water resistance. Although you should still use a case if you're going to bring it underwater because Apple does not cover that water damage if it does get damaged. So for example, the iPhone 11 pro has IP 68 up to four meters deep for 30 minutes. The iPhone 11 has two meters deep for up to 30 minutes. So it's very similar, just a little bit different. Both devices support fast charging where you can get 50% battery life in 30 minutes, but only the 11 pro comes with the fast charger in the box. The iPhone 11 comes with the five watt charger. If you want faster charging, you have to purchase that separately. Now between both of these, they're almost the same with the exception of the size, the display, the battery life, and then the lack of the telephoto lens. Other than that, they're almost identical in every way. Either one is a great choice if you're trying to figure that out. And if you're on a budget, get the 11, you won't be disappointed. If you're really looking for the best in the top of the line, then get the pro either one. I think you'll be happy with, but let me know which one you'll choose and why in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you'd like to see more of these videos, as soon as they're released, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.